Today we're going to revisit an auto bed leveling hack that we did to our Prusa Mark III almost two years ago. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, it's kind of hard to believe that it's been almost two years since we did the Nylock bed leveling mod on this Prusa 3D printer. And when we did that video, there were some concerns that this modification wouldn't hold up. It wouldn't be able to hold the level just based on how the mod was done. There were also some suggestions on a better way to achieve the same results. So I thought it'd be a great time to revisit this and just see how the printer held up. Also, I've recently run into one of my other 3D printers that could really use some help in this space. So we're going to tackle that as well. So let's get started by just going over what the Nylock mod is and how it works. So here's the printing surface of a Prusa Mark III. And if you take off your removable sheet, you'll notice that there are nine different screws here that attach the bed to the Y carriage. These Mark 52 beds with that aluminum carriage underneath, sometimes you can get some inconsistencies, and Prusa isn't the only one that manufactures these. These come on several different 3D printers. So based on the printer you have, it might be just a little bit off. The Nylock mod gives you the ability to dial each one of these screws in and make this bed as level as absolutely possible. And if we take a look underneath the printer, it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, we have that countersunk screw coming in from the top, going into that Y carriage. But we've separated that screw with this nylock nut and a nylon washer. So the nut and the washer are just snugged up to the PCB heater here. And then that screw is floating in the Y carriage on the threads. So it makes each one of these screws adjustable up and down so you can get that bed really level. It is important to note that the center one is like stock. That is considered zero. So just the spacer is underneath that center post. The other eight have this set up with the nylock nut. One of the biggest concerns when we did the nylock mod was the fact that that screw is now floating in the Y carriage. It would have the opportunity to back itself out or even tighten itself up in the right circumstance. So even if you went around to each screw and got it as level as you could, it could have the potential to just undo itself over time. And that's one of the things I wanted to check out for this video. Now keep in mind, this 3D printer right here, I use it all the time. It has over 100 days of use on it, and I took it to MRF 2022 with me in the car over a nine hour trip. It also spent a ton of time on the shaky table. If you don't know what that is, I will leave a link in the description below. Also a fun fact, when I did this Nylock mod the first time, I learned how to do it by watching a video from Ben Gadgets. And I actually got to meet Ben at MRF 2022. So that was fun and it kind of tied this whole thing together. Great to meet you, Ben. But now let's go ahead and see how consistent this printer is today versus where it was when we first did this modification. And like I showed in the first video, the easiest way to keep track of how level this bed actually is so you can make modifications is through Octoprint with Bed Visualizer. There are several plugins out there that you can grab that do things that are very similar to this one. This is the Bed Visualizer. But there's also one that's a little bit more catered towards this modification, and it's Prusa specific. This is the Prusa Leveling Guide. It will actually give you an idea of how much you need to turn each one of these screws if you get it set up correctly. But it's also not all that hard just to kind of play with it and get it dialed in. It's important to note as we take a look at this mesh, I have done nothing to adjust this printer since that original video. Occasionally the printer will get a little bit out of whack and it does the Z auto align, but all that amounts to is the printer going to the top of the gantry and then doing a nine point level. It does a 49 point level before each print. But you can see just how flat this bed is. And if we take a look at footage from the original video, it wasn't that much better dialed in than it is today. This is a before shot and this is an after shot. So it's a little out of spec today as far as when the original leveling was done, but not that bad. So it can use a bit of a tweak, but it's nowhere near as out as something like a stock Prusa would be even. Just for an example, we can take a look at my Prusa Bear. This is what the bed looks like every day, and I print on it very regularly. I have no issues whatsoever. So again, compare this bed, this is very normal to see on a Prusa printer. 
and compare it to the one with the Nylock mod. It's much flatter. And as far as I'm concerned, the Nylock mod has been a success. It really hasn't changed all that much over the last couple of years, and this printer does get moved around a lot, and I did the bare minimum to maintain it. I haven't re-leveled since that last video. Now we do have to interject with some common sense here. The Prusa printers, as well as a lot of printers nowadays, have auto bed leveling. And on the Prusas, they run it before each print to keep things consistent. And with a bed, even like the one I showed you on the Bear, that is going to be more than enough to keep your bed surface nice and flat while it's printing. It's there to do that compensation, and it works really well. But having said that, I have run into printers where they were just too far out to allow that ABL to work correctly. It's auto bed leveling, not magic. So there are some machines that could use some help. Or you might just be one of those people that has to have that bed as flat as possible. And there's nothing wrong with that. And this modification is really easy to do. So go ahead and give it a try. So let's take a look at another printer now. One that I know needs a little bit of help in this area. This is my Voron switch wire. And you might notice I have a Prusa sheet on it. It does utilize the same bed as a Prusa Mark III. A Mark 52, this one is made by LDO, but it's the same concept, almost the same exact part. And this one isn't near as level as the ones that I usually see on the Prusa printers. So this is a great candidate to do a modification like this. And if you take a look at my height map, you can see the evidence of that bed not being very level. Keep the ratio in mind here, that's 200 micron right there, but it is getting on the low side of what that ABL could probably tolerate. So it could definitely use some dialing in. It's a lot higher in the back of the bed than it is the front. I think this mod is perfect for this machine. And you can see some of the remnants of that bed not being exactly level in the printed parts. In the corners, they tend to pull a little bit because it's not close enough to the bed. And then on the fore corner, it's a little bit too close. Same with this part over here. A little too far away, a little too close. As it gets out to the edges, that bed isn't as consistent and the ABL isn't able to keep up. So the Nylock mod is working great on that Prusa 3D printer. I don't see any reason to change it up. The bed is staying very consistent. But again, when I made that video, there were a lot of suggestions about other methods you could use to achieve the same results that weren't near as fiddly. It is kind of hard to get all those nylock nuts on, get your wrench under there, tighten them up, and get it just right. The biggest one I see is about silicone tube. You take a piece of silicone tube and you use it as your standoff, then you can compress it with that screw, and that will hold the tension on the screw on the Y carriage, as well as compress the bed and make it adjustable. So that's the method that we're gonna try on our switch wire to help out its bed leveling. And there's a lot of great information on how to do this modification. Again, it is very simple, but I ran across this website. They show you exactly what you need to do. They give you a lot of helpful links to 3D printed parts that help you cut the tube and what have you. I'll leave a link to this out there, but again, it's very self-explanatory. So all I did was grab some high temp silicone tube from Amazon it has a three millimeter inner diameter and an eight millimeter outer. This should be good to well over any temperature we're ever going to achieve. I use the 3D printed part to help me cut it. They want you to cut these tubes into 10 millimeters because the stock standoff is a six. So that gives you a little extra room to squish it. Now there are a couple of different parts. Really the only difference is how wide the slot is based on the knife or blade that you're gonna use. I like the one with the smaller slot. I think it's a little more accurate. Then I just use your standard scraper razor blade to cut it. It's very simple. You lay your tube down in your printed part and then slide in your blade. That's gonna give you nice and consistent silicone standoffs that you can use underneath your bed. And you will need to cut eight of those. We're gonna swap out all the spacers except the center one. That center one will stay at zero, so we have some consistency. So basically all we need to do is back out these nine screws. You could go ahead and leave that center one, but I'm gonna pull it off just to inspect, make sure there's nothing going on underneath there. So everything looks good under our bed. I've got all nine screws out, and here's all of the spacers. 
Now, depending on the spacers you have, the ones from Prusa are a little more consistent than the ones I've seen on some of these kits. So pick the one that's closest to six millimeters. That's what we're shooting for here. So we'll just go ahead and grab one and we'll put it in the center spot on our bed to get us started. So let's put that one on loose for now. And then we can work our way around and slide in our silicone spacers. Now, since that silicone spacer is 10 millimeter, that screw isn't quite long enough to go into the Y carriage when it's not compressed. So you're gonna have to push down just a bit to get that screw started, but just start it a couple of threads and then we can work our way around the rest of the bed. It's already a lot easier to do this than to mess with that nylock nut. And you don't have to worry about these marring that PCB. So you can leave out that nylon washer if you need to. So now I'm just gonna work my way around to all eight of the other screws. So after you have all of your spacers on and started a couple of threads, then you can work around the bed and start to snug them up. Now you don't wanna put any added stress on this bed surface. Remember those are 10 millimeter spacers. You're gonna have a lot of squish and that one in the center is six. So you have a little bit of travel to go, but you don't just wanna clamp these down because that's gonna stress it out and it could break it. So be very careful when you're tightening these up. Do small increments. I would suggest you do the center, a half turn, then these four, a half turn, and then the four on the outer edge, a half turn. And work in that pattern until you're snug in the center. And there we go. That gives us a great starting point. And let me show you these spacers here in the front so you can get an idea of how squished they're gonna be when this one is seated on that hard spacer. So you can see there with that center one, there's quite a bit of squish, but that's okay. That'll keep that bed in place. You can see the other one back there. Just don't get carried away with tightening it. You don't want to damage your bed. Small increments. So the mod is very straightforward to implement. Now all we have to do is dial it in. Now with Marlin and Octoprint, it's a little easier in my opinion with those plugins to do something like this because it's gonna give you a little better idea of what you need to adjust, especially with that Prusa plugin. Now with Mainsail, it does give you a graph of what you need to do so we can see it change, but we'll see if we can use some of the online tools as well if you wanna go that route, if you're not using Mainsail or even something like Octoprint. So to test to see how we did, remember I just snugged this one up by doing all of these a quarter turn at a time. So they should all be pretty equal, but let's go ahead and put on our sheet and run a bed level just to see what the map looks like now. Remember, this is what we were working with before, but let's go ahead and heat up to 60. And once we're up to temp, we'll home and we'll go ahead and do our calibrate. We'll let it build its mesh and see how close we got. And let's see how we did. Well, you can definitely see we're going to need to dial this in quite a bit. We're way worse than we were before, but that's pretty much what I expected. At this point, we're pretty much in no man's land. And you can see here in the center where that solid spacer is, it's pulled way down. So we definitely need to get closer to that center mark. The front is pulled down a little bit too much. The back, not near enough. You can also take a look over here at the console and get all of those values if you like. Maybe that's just a little bit easier for you to interpret. But basically all I'm gonna do is adjust each screw, level again, just to see how close I can get this bed to level. So if our bed needs to come up, like we saw on the height map here in the front corner, I'm just gonna back it out a quarter turn the center one didn't need to come up so much, so I'm just going to do an eighth of a turn. And then here it actually needed to come down a bit, so I'm going to do an eighth of a turn. And then in the back, it needed to come down quite a bit. So I'm going to do a quarter turn on all three of these. Then we'll see where we're at. Small increments is the key to getting this correct. And after just that one tightening in our second round, we're already starting to look better. I know it might look exaggerated, but it's a lot closer than it was before. So two or three more times around, we should be able to get this dialed in fairly close. It's looking promising. And I'm gonna say this again while I'm trying to dial this in just perfect. You don't have to go to these links to get this done. 
Just get it as close as you can and auto bed leveling is going to do the rest. It's pretty good. It can't work miracles, but it gets you out of a lot of situations with inconsistent build surfaces. But it is always kind of fun to see how close you can get it, and this is a very affordable and pretty easy to do mod. So why not? So let's continue. After our second adjustment, it's getting even better. Our deviation is down to 0.78. This Prusa sheet before was 0.753. So we're really close to where we were, but I know that we can dial it in even closer. So a few more adjustments and we'll try it again. So after four adjustments, I was able to get the deviation down to 263 micron. That's pretty good. The graph here actually makes it look a lot more exaggerated than it actually is. You can see these humps in between the screws. You can probably level those out by backing them out just a bit. But if you look at it based on the chart here, you go around to each point, they're very close. So this is going to be super flat all in all. But you could continue dialing it in as much as you want. There is one thing I would like to test. I'm going to take the printer up to 110 on the bed just to see how it affects those silicone mounts. So even at over 100C, we were able to get it down to 238. I did tweak it a little bit, but really the question is consistency. So I'm not going to tweak it at all. So 238, let's just run another one and see how it turns out. The second run was actually better at 216, but I'm fairly certain that's consistent enough. That low a deviation, we shouldn't have any problems at all. One final test though, we're at over 100 right now. Let's lower it to 60 and run it one more time. Back down to 60C, we're at 225. I'm confident that these silicone mounts are going to be pretty consistent based on temp. So, I think it's a pretty solid mod. So there it is. Our Prusa bed leveling hack with the nylock nuts has held up almost two years in, and the new method with the silicone tube is even easier to implement. We were even able to help out our Voron switch wire. And who knows, maybe we'll be back in another two years to check out how that mod held up. Hopefully you found this interesting. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.